Hey everyone, welcome to Brick Vault. It took a little over two and a half years, but we finally completed all the Microscale Clone Wars models, I think, for the most part. There's always some more stuff you can add in this universe, but hey oh, this batch of Microscale models from the designer Fukusaku really knocks out the rest of this era's big heavy hitter vehicles, and then some. There is now the Theta Class Shuttle, an AT-AP, J-1 Proton Cannon, 87 Cannon, Rogue Class Starfighter, Wookiee Catamaran, the Sheathapede Shuttles, Defoliator Tank, Saber Class Fighter Tank, Geonosian Starfighter, an N1, and Grievous's Soulless One. Together there are some fun little details and techniques hidden throughout these micro 1250 scale models that I want to get into, but first I'd like to say that if you wanted to build these creations for yourself, the instructions can be found at BrickVault.toys. With each purchase comes the PDF step-by-step -step building guide and a parts list for fast ordering your pieces online. The models are physically tested in real life. We test instructions for ease of build and the parts are chosen for availability on the brick buying market. Buying instructions is an excellent way to help support the channel and the talented, talented designers we work with like Fukusaku who has made three other Clone Wars era bundles of ships and vehicles plus at the same scale knocked out an amazing Republic frigate. Fukusaku is also worth checking out if you are a fan of Initial D, you like construction vehicles, or fig scale Star Wars speeders. Link in the description below! And let's start off by saying this bundle has a pretty unique combination of vehicles. Five vehicles for the Republic and seven for the Separatists, and an N1, which I guess would fall under the Republic, but you don't see it fighting during the Clone Wars. Doesn't matter, I guess that's number six. Fun fact, we have built full minifig scale models of nearly every vehicle in this little lineup I'm going to show you. And then when you combine everything together for Micro Clone Wars, out of the 43 different total vehicles that you see here, we have built 31 of them in minifigure scale. And of the models here that have not yet been brought to full fig scale yet, there are designers currently working on four of these vehicles. So feel free to guess which ones you think are going to end up as minifig scale models next. And righto, let's start with the Republic vehicles first. And this is the biggest one, so here's the Theta Class T2C shuttle. This is the smaller precursor to the Lambda Class T4A shuttle from the original trilogy. It's only reserved for the highest of the high-ranking officials, and you see this vehicle first transporting Palpatine at the end of Revenge of the Sith. It shares a similar look to the NU, or New, shuttle, which was the Republic's less sophisticated contemporary shuttle design at the time. It's got good armor, it's got good weapons, it's got a great hyperdrive, and probably legit massage chair on the inside, but that's just a guess. The Lego build is easy and straightforward to manipulate, and the use of the longer blade piece right at the top fin adds an excellent bit of stylization to the ship. Next up is the ATAP. You see this in the Battle of Kashyyyk running along next to the big Clone Wars turbo tank. This three-legged walker might be big by a stud, but it's really cool to see how well these models scale considering they were done by different designers. This little Lego build is constantly changing the stud orientation just about every second connection, and it allows for the angular head of the pod and all the offset leg and cannon connections to work together. It's a great looking walker. Now I guess we're staying in Kashyyyk. Here is the Wookiee Catamaran. Its unique curvy shape requires a lot of organic parts, organic looking parts at micro scale. It uses the large tooth pieces for the pontoon type shapes in the front, small tooth pieces for a mid connector between the pontoons, Fig hands as rear stabilizers and wands indicate some fluttering wings. Now we've got the tiny TX-130 Saber class fighter tank, was also technically in Kashyyyk, but never seen in the Revenge of the Sith film. It's fleshed out better in the Battlefront games. There are levers that indicate some cannons on the side of the head. The overly large flexible spike pieces sticking out in the front make the vehicle a bit more recognizable. But my favorite bit of detailing here 
is subtle. The little wheel detailing that peeks through the front remind me of those two tiny windows on the tank. It's very hard to see, but it's definitely a fun thing to pick up on. Now the N1 is always fun. Very, very difficult to shrink this already tiny ship into something that scales and also registers as recognizable. Fukusaku did a great job here. The spear tip with those little fin pieces in pearl gold really make the look of this flyer work. And there's also a bit of color gradation with the yellows that I like. Last batting up for the Republic is this basic support artillery. It is the AV-7 cannon, a straightforward design that has an adjustable barrel and legs. And in large enough qualities, these cannons could devastate incoming separatists at a distance. Now the same equivalent devastation could be said for this separatist droid vehicle. It is the J-1 proton cannon. The head is probably a little fatter than scale, but you get some great shaping here, including the lipstick pieces that make up the glowing red eyes. This time the head does not tilt, but instead the legs can be adjusted with a few more points of articulation for slightly more dynamic poses. The Rogue Class Starfighter has some interesting history in the Star Wars universe. It's originally based on a design from Utapau. The name of that ship was the Porax 38, but then Bactoid Armor Workshop reverse engineered the ship so they could just produce it themselves. It only ever saw use by specialized groups or individuals over the years, and its unique shape is brought to life in Lego bricks using binoculars in the rear, unicorn horns, and those plasma rifle looking pieces. Now here's a fun little one, the Nantex Starfighter. At 1 250 scale, this little single seater is so tiny. The rounded hinge plates and wands are simple enough to construct, but they also just wonderfully capture this strangely rounded and sleek pointy little ship design. It's only ever really seen on Geonosis where it is a planetary defense craft and the technology used to produce it is so strange that I don't think the Bactoid guys could have reverse engineered this little fighter even if they tried. Here's a fun specialty weapon for the Separatists. We have the Defoliator Deployment Tank. It's basically a big beefy version Version of an AAT. The body is the same in the front with an extended rear that helps support the massive defoliator turret. The weapon seems super effective, but too bad it joins the nearly endless list of super weapons that just gets cut down well before they're able to get used. I had not realized just how small the soulless one actually is when I looked up its size online. I can't imagine this micro model getting any tinier than it is right here, but it's in fact about a stud and a half large. This is one of those situations though that I think is more than forgivable because the shaping is seamless and it's just a great use of parts. You can recognize what ship this is from a far distance considering how small it is already. Alrighty, the last ones of the bundle are these two sheathapedes. They look pretty large compared to a lot of the other builds, but that's one of those surprising things about accuracy. Sometimes things show up in a way that you don't expect. Here we have the Trade Federation colored manned shuttle in tan and the pilotless separatist colored one in the gray and blue. I especially like how the designer figured out the parts for the front end. And now we've come to the end of the micro presentation. Remember, link in the description below, brickvault.toys if you wanna get the instructions. What other vehicles from this era have we missed? I can think of a couple off the top of my head, but we certainly have covered most of the big guys here that played major roles on either side of the Clone Wars conflict. Obviously, let me know what other types of models you would like to see us build in the future. Thank you so much for sticking around to the end. If you enjoy our content, feel free to like, subscribe, comment, or share, and we'll see you next time at Brick Vault.